So she's saying that the sitting in the meditation posture, first of all, was quite uncomfortable or painful, but now she doesn't feel that so much anymore. Yeah, it's good. Your body get you, gets used to it, and for most Westerners, certainly, we're not accustomed to sitting on the floor, so that's going to be an uncomfortable posture just because you're not used to it. So that's to be expected. After a while, you see, you, the mind gives up complaining about it, and then you just get, after the painful and the discomfort in the physical posture, what happens is the mind kind of gives up and says, okay, now it's the falling asleep phase. And then the, you're just praying for a little bit of pain to wake you up because the mind's just so sludgy and, and uncooperative. On pains in the body, I should mention that we have what we call Dharma pains. And Dharma pains are stresses or tensions that we hold inside the body that start to come out when the mind is held still. And this happens in, it can happen in yoga apparently. I've never done enough yoga to find out myself, but yoga teachers and people tell me that it happens there too. What it is, is the every thought or feeling that you have has a physical counterpart. So think about threading a needle. Do you thread a needle like this? Or do you thread a needle like this? Why are you sticking the tongue out your mouth and squinting an eye? Does that help thread the needle? <coughs> Actually my boss when I was a welder and if I was messing it up he'd always tell me hold the tongue on the other side of your mouth. <laughs> Because the act of threading a needle is stressful, you're really trying hard to do something and that will manifest in your body. So just about anything that you do will start to have physical counterpart. And sometimes if you're getting in still meditation, you can feel just one thought, one little nagging worry or person or something that you can identify and you'll feel it somewhere in your body. Often for me, it's this finger here. And if I have a little thought ticking along, this, this finger here it kind of just presses a bit. Well, those are the surface thoughts, but the, the longer thoughts that you have in your life, or the deeper thoughts, they really hold stress deep inside the body. And by holding the mind still, but bright and alert, these stresses can start to unfold and manifest out and they can be diabolically painful at times. There is a rule of thumb so that you don't get mixed up between what is a Dharma pain and what is a real pain. Because there are times when you have a real pain, real pain in your knee or your back, and you need to be sensible. If, you, if, if sitting is throwing your back out, don't do it. You need to be sensible about this and your knee. Don't break your knees, it's ridiculous. On the other hand, if you just always follow the easiest possible method, that's not going to help you very much easier. I did do a retreat once, my first ever retreat, and there's a woman there, and she had a bench, and she'd climb onto this bench, and it had several hooks and bars which would go around her legs, and then she'd climb onto this bench and then lever these ratchets, and it would move the legs up, and then she'd move another ratchet, and it would move her back. It's quite fascinating, it would take her 10 minutes to get into this perfect posture, like this. And then after five minutes, it'd be like two little ratchets, and then another little ratchet, as she'd keep adjusting. I found it fascinating, it's much better than doing meditation, was watching her. <laughs> <laughs> I found out afterwards she had severe arthritis, and so... You know, that deflated all my, my comments that I've been making in my mind. So, you don't want to do something if it's going to cause you physical problems. And the rule of thumb is, if you have a pain arise, if that pain stays with you after you get out of the meditation and you start walking around, then it's probably a real pain and you need to change something. Change your posture, put something under your backside, maybe you need to move to a chair. On the other hand, if the pain 
as soon as you get up and move around, it disappears. That's a Dharma pain. And Dharma pains can be Dhamma pains, because you damn pain. <laughs> and they can manifest all over the body. The stomach is a big one. I remember it very clearly the first day when this huge knot came out of my stomach. And I was sitting there meditating, I was feeling quite happy actually. And then suddenly it felt like my stomach had folded up like this, and then it just went and unfolded. And I'm like, something changed here. But that moment when it unfolded, the beautiful pain came across my stomach. And I say beautiful because I knew it was coming out, it's manifesting and breaking out. I had another one in my back, right in the shoulder, and it was a golf ball that just in my shoulder. And every time I would sit, within 10 seconds, it's like, ah, this thing just appear in my shoulder. And my teachers were saying, you don't sit properly, because my posture was like that at the time. Which I was quite happy meditating like that. And they were giving me all kinds of things. There was a Tai Chi teacher, he told me I have to practice squeezing my shoulders up and dropping them and all of this. Nothing worked. And it went on for about a year. It's just every time I'd meditate, this golf ball would appear in my back. It's a horrible thing. And then one day it just went psh, like that. Just, just unwound itself and broke out. And the second it did that, I turned my attention onto it and shh, it was back. But once you've seen it end, you know that it's not real. You know that it's going to end. From that moment on, I had confidence over it and it kind of disappeared within a week. But one appeared on the other shoulder. <laughs> and that lasted for a month or two before that went. So you do get pains that will start to manifest out, kind of break out, and these are good. So long as they disappear when you get up and you move around. When I first started meditating, I had a steel band across my chest, and I swear there was a, you know, a hose clamp that you like a screw that tightens the clamp. This met this iron band tightening around my chest here, and the second I would get up, there's nothing there; it's gone. So that took a couple of weeks for that one to. Actually, I had to really go into it and really like, I'm not going to let you beat me, and. If, then it just disappeared. So, with the physical pains, you need to distinguish between Dharma pains and real pains. 